All right, so let's talk about routing. So, yeah, I mean, as we've been discussing, routing is about navigation. Yeah, depending on what the URL tells it to the browser, will display some content or a different one. So far, all the progress you've been doing as part of Codeflix has been manual. You've been coding every single feature you've built. However, today, now, by the first time ever, we are going to learn how to integrate an external component. Yeah? So software is about building modular components. And even though the majority of the features you build are handmade, if you accept the expression, even though that sounds a bit rudimentary, uh, in reality, over time, you'll integrate components to extend the power of your application. And this is a good example. So today, I'm going to install a plugin or a package, to be more precise, called React Router DOM. I'll share that with you on Slack in a minute. So what React Router DOM? This is the de facto standard way of dealing with uh, navigation using React. So if I go to Google and I search React uh, Router, React Router, or React Router, depending on your accent, then you'll find a very nice article called reacttraining.com, blah, 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 blah. So that's what I'm going to do today. Yeah, so this, uh, this article, which is quite uh, interesting, and I'm sharing to you right now on Slack, will show you how to start working with React Router DOM. So first things first, installation. That's important, guys. That's important, not just because today's workshop, but... Because generally speaking, you will follow the same approach whenever you want to install a new package as part of your application. Look, you should type that command into the terminal. npm install and then the name of the package you want to install. So you're essentially installing a new package into your project. There are two ways of doing that. Like that npm install react router DOM or the command you got on top called npm install dash g create react tab. Does anyone know what the dash g flag stands for? Global, correct, global. And what global means, Maxim? Wrong, wrong. Global? It's not about the entire project. It's about your entire system. In other words, if you install a package globally, any project using that package in your laptop will get access to that dependency. Let me tell you something. I never, ever, 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 never, ever, ever use that flag. Never, ever. And the reason is, installing packages globally, I mean, it's quite handy, right? Because you don't need to install them again on a new project. So you got the, you got the install and that's it. However, it breaks one of the most important principles of modern software development, which is encapsulation. Whenever you have a project, and I'm not necessarily talking about React or view or angular it doesn't matter guys it doesn't matter which technology you are using one of the most fundamental principles about coding is all the dependencies of the project should be self-encapsulated yeah? so that's a good example that's a good example i want to have all the code all the plugins and all the dependencies as far as possible to be part i want them to be part of my project so in other words i'm gonna type the command you got at the bottom, npm install react router DOM. Where do you paste that command? Well, at, on any terminal, so on any terminal. So for instance, uh, I got uh, the classic uh, boilerplate project with me, and imagine that I'm running the, the server, you will see in a second, the server is starting now, 
and as part of that process I want to install a new package like this one so guys first things first first things first whenever you want to install a package I will strongly recommend you to stop the server you see the server is running I cannot type anything well technically speaking I can however you know the terminal is not listening for any input I cannot interact with the terminal anymore so you have to kill the server does anyone know how can I kick, how can I kill the running server? Correct. You can press Ctrl C on your keyboard. I'll do that in a minute. There is an alternative. You see on VS Code, you see the bin icon. If you click there, it will kill the terminal completely. So both options. Either you click on the bin icon or you press Ctrl C. You see, when you press Ctrl C, you are sending a kill message. So now you can interact with the terminal and you can type your sexy commands. So, hmm? Hmm? yeah, that's all right. That's a good question. Technically, you're you right, Maxim. Technically speaking, technically speaking, you can have multiple terminals running in parallel. How do you do that? Well, I'll show you two options. Either you click on the plus button. So then, you see, look at the drop down. I got two terminals, A and B. So I could leave the uh, server running on terminal one, and I could run my npm install command on terminal two. That's fine. Um, there's another way of running multiple terminals. I love that uh, button, guys, this split terminal. So if you click here, you got one terminal on the left and one terminal on the right hand side. Yeah, so, you know, this is pretty much the same thing. Uh, however, however, even though technically speaking, you can have multiple terminals running in parallel, when talking about installing React packages or JavaScript packages, to be a bit more generic, I would suggest you to always stop the server. And why? Because sometimes, let me remark sometimes, uh, the server is unable to get the new packages without restarting it. It sometimes works, it sometimes doesn't work, because it takes 30 seconds to restart the server. I will suggest you to stop the server, then you install the package, then you start the server again. I think that's the safest alternative. So look, I paste npm run, npm install react router DOM, and now my laptop is going to the internet to download all the you know, files, folders, resources, assets, whatever it is necessary to integrate that package as part of my project. So that may take a few minutes, depending on the performance of, of your laptop. In the meantime, let me present you the problem I want to build. So the problem I want to build is I want to build some sort of portfolio. At some point, and that will happen shortly, you'll run a, an extreme programming session. We'll see what the hell extreme programming session means, but that will happen probably on the next week. So the extreme programming session will be about building your portfolio or start building your portfolio at least. And as, that, as part of that process, um, you will have to create probably a bunch of uh, views. Yeah, you, Do you guys get uh, how a classic portfolio looks like? So you got the home page, and then you got, I don't know, projects, and then you got skills, about me, contact, you know, the, the classic uh, the classic components of, uh, um, of the majority of the portfolios. So that's what I want to build today, obviously a simplified version of a portfolio with some roots, with some URLs. Thankfully, the installation process is finished. You may notice towards the end of the... Uh, installation process there is uh, a message saying plus react router dom and then the version so if you get something like that that means that everything went well you can ignore the warnings you, you will notice that uh npm is very vocal whenever you install something it speaks a lot but at the end of the day the important thing is to get that message plus and then the name of the package with the version all right, so now once I got uh, my package installed, I will run <coughs> um, npm start. As you know, that's the command that will start my server. And then we'll see uh, how can I essentially display a bunch of uh, URLs, a bunch of 
addresses on my on my web browser so you can see that my server is running on look at the address guys localhost 3005 so my plan is my plan is whenever i land on localhost 3005 i want to display the home page whenever i land on localhost 3005 slash uh, skills for instance I want to display the skills page yeah? and so on. You see, the idea is to have a bunch of URLs. So whenever the user lands on, for instance, that URL, we will present our list of skills. Whenever the user lands on the root homepage, we'll display the details about whatever you want to display on the on the homepage. Yeah? So that's pretty much the idea. So do you remember, guys? on the probably it was the second day of the bootcamp uh, how did we add a picture together do you remember the steps we had to follow in order to add a picture yeah and then display it right that's correct was that lorraine correct so lorraine is right you remember guys we first of all import the picture you remember import mega sour from whatever the location of Megasarc and eventually we display the picture on the HTML part. So routing has many similarities with that process. Look, first of all, we have to import something. So what we have to import first is something called browser browser router. That's the name of the component from React Router DOM. So you just need to remember that line. Import browser router from React Router DOM. Does anyone remember what this curly braces implied? Correct. Correct. That's that's correct, uh, Elena. Uh, last week we explained different ways of exporting components. Yeah, and we said that. If you were exporting multiple components, you had to import them using the curly braces. So we can pass here a comma separated list of components we want to import. We'll see that in a minute. Yeah? So that's the first thing. We import whatever we need from the package that we just installed, React Router DOM. We import that package. We import that component. That's the first thing. And then let's pay attention to the syntax we have to deal with in order to create a bunch of roots look browser router is just an html tag so first things first we display it like we were displaying images and now look at what else do we have to do now i want to define a list of roots to do that to do that uh you need to import another component called root you see, I got two components installed. First of all, the main one, which is browser router or browser router, and then another component called root. Why we need the root component? We need it. Once you see an example, you'll see how simple this is. We need to declare to enable a list of roots as part of our application. Look, whenever the user goes to the home page, I will do something. Yeah, that's not complete yet. Whenever the user goes to class skills, I will do something else. And what that means? We need to create obviously the content. What's the content associated to the home page? What's the content associated to the skills page? Well, that's up to us. Let's create a function called home, home page, for instance. Yeah. This is a basic function, return, whatever. So let me just display maybe a div. So div, uh, welcome to my portfolio. Yeah, obviously, maybe with some heading. You know, just a basic message for the homepage. And likewise, let's create a new function for the skills, skills page. Pretty much the same thing. Pretty much the same thing. So return. Uh, I don't know. Div, uh, I like 
I don't know. Um, JavaScript, React, Vue, etc. Yeah, you get the point. Two individual pages. Uh, from a scalability point of view, eventually we will move the homepage component and the skills page component to a new file, new folder, whatever, as we discussed on the last week. But for now, for now, just for testing purposes, I would like to keep these two functions in here. So what do we do with this function? Let's pay attention to the syntax. Back to line number 25. When the path is slash, then I want to display the homepage component. When the path and the URL is slash skills, then I will display the skills page. And that's it. You see? That's pretty simple. You display the browser router component and then you define a list of individual routes that your component will uh, render. So let's see what happens if now I refresh my web application. You see? First of all, I got my welcome to my portfolio message. Can anyone predict what will happen if I now change the URL to localhost 3005 slash skills? What will that display? Hmm. No? Someone disagree on that? Wait, 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 as, as we, no, 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 wait, so as, as we discussed before, so that's about best practices. So about best practices, eventually, of course, eventually I'm going to move everything to a new file, but that's not necessary. This is just about scalability of your project, yeah? So technically speaking, I can leave everything here. Yeah. It will stay in the homepage. Ah, um, uh, awesome, awesome, Aaron. That was a brilliant answer. That was a brilliant answer. So, in mind that you don't get what uh, Aaron said. If it's the first time I'm playing with React, I will. I could predict that if I uh, redirect, if I change the URL to slash skills, I will show the skills page. Yeah, but look what happened if I do that slash skills. Ah. Uh, that's, you see that, guys? That's a bit weird. It worked somehow because I got my list of skills. However, do you see anything as smelly? What's wrong here? Yeah, the homepage is still displayed. So if I go to the homepage, perfect. I got the homepage. Fantastic. Fantastic. However, if I go to slash skills, I got the skills, but I also get the homepage. Can anyone apart from I don't tell me why is that? What's wrong with this last? Um, yeah. So I don't think it's a problem at all to keep this last. The problem is, the problem is, guys, that's the way React Router don't works. So whenever you go to slash, the URL ends on slash, the only matching route is the homepage. However, when you go to slash skills, as Aaron originally pointed out, you see slash skills includes the slash. That's why both roots are satisfied both roots match the current url when you go to slash skills which is a bit weird personally as a default behavior but that's the way it works so as aaron suggested there is a very simple way of solving the problem can you aaron repeat repeat how to make the urls unique somehow ah that's correct that's correct 
you pass the what's that iron by the way for not right so you got exact attribute on the url yeah ah, yeah <laughs> nice nice good stuff yeah <laughs> you see guys if you add the exact attribute remember guys uh, what you pass on the tags are attributes when you pass the exact attribute then only if the path matches what you have in the url then that route will be considered if the path is exactly slash display the home page if the path is exactly literally slash skills then render the skills page so look boom you see my url points to slash skills and then i got yes uh, the skills related content if however i go to the home page that remains valid because i get just the content associated to the home page so questions mm, yep On the, in the order, you mean the order of the attributes? No. Yeah, no. That's fine. That's fine, Lauren. So the order of the attributes doesn't matter at all. And you can you can do whatever you want. I uh, yeah, as you'll see in a minute, that should work. Here you go. I was zooming the screen a lot, so I got the home page, and if I go to skills, it should only display the list of skills. Yeah. So yeah, that that doesn't matter. Mm. Yeah, go for it, Elena. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's interesting. That's interesting, Elena. So we haven't talked about aliases. So an alias, it's a way to rename a component. Imagine that I am lazy today and I don't want to type browser router all the time. So at the time you import it, you can do browser router as whatever you want. Brexit. Yeah. So now, obviously, rather than typing browser router, just type Brexit. Yeah. And we'll... Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's the point. That's the point. So uh, obviously, Brexit is not the convention here. But when talking about React Router, many developers, many developers, don't ask me why, I don't know the reasons, like to rename browser router to router. Because it's simpler, I guess from a readability point of view, I don't know, makes things a bit easier. But once again, that's optional. Yeah, You can rename it or not, that's up to you, that's up to you. If you rename it, then remember to use the alias at the bottom, otherwise that won't work. That's all right. More questions, guys? No, again, again, again. No, guys, no, no, no. I've said that 40 times already. Don't do that. This is just for educational purposes. I will I will move my components in a minute. Yeah, I will move them in a minute. This is just to prove to see. Yeah, go for it, please. Uh, 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 no, 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 just once, just on the app, on the main component, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, guys, you import just once, correct, yeah, we'll see that in a minute, don't worry guys, because we're going to refactor that code in a, in a minute, guys, did you notice, did you notice that apart from my content, which is fantastic, I got that heading, hi, can you tell me why the heading, the main welcome message, the, oh, sorry, not the main welcome message, the main text high is always displayed, regardless of what the URL is. Exactly, Lauren. Look, it's hard coded outside of the router. Can you tell me any use case or scenario where you may want to have stuff outside of the router? 
brilliant. A company logo, exactly. You know, exactly, exactly. You're right, guys. All these things. You know, when you visit any web application like Coldity, I mean, you, you get a lot of stuff. But uh, um, so if you if you navigate through the through the web application, um, you will see that. Um, oh God, sorry. It's trying to render something. It's a bit slow, right? But the thing is, uh, let me try to show, I don't know, the Hall of Fame, whatever. So there is a heading, there is a header with a logo, with a title, maybe with some links, some actions, whatever. So that heading remains there regardless of where I am. You see, if I navigate, the URL changes. However, I'm not fully refreshing the page. I'm just updating the content inside of the router yeah so when talking about things like a, having a menu a header a footer you know copyright you don't want to change these messages on every single page you want to keep them globally all the time right so that's why sometimes sometimes having stuff outside not affected by the router could be convenient any other questions No? All right, so now uh, let me present you a problem. So far, we got a couple of routes. This is looking good. However, imagine that you are uh, presenting your portfolio to an employer and then you're going to tell them, yeah, so this is my homepage uh, with the information about me, blah, blah, blah. And then if I show you skills, you need to manually go to the URL and type skills. I mean, that's not going to scale, right? Who changed the URL manually to access a different part of the application? That doesn't make any sense. We got things like links and buttons to navigate, right? So that's what I would like to present now. How to link one page from the other. That's pretty simple, actually. We need to add a new dependency, which is called link. You see? Link. So once you got the link, you can do something like that. Look at the, let's pay attention to the syntax. Link to skills and now some text inside, like go to the skills page. Okay. So now if I on the home page and I refresh the content, you see, I got a link. So if I click on the link, I will be redirected to the skills page. Can anyone tell me how to reverse the process? How can I navigate from the skills to the home page? Which function? Here. Home page, yeah? Uh, yeah after the link here hmm hmm mm hmm go back home okay what do you think guys Will that enable, will, will that allow users to navigate from the skills page to the home page? Uh, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, guys. <laughs> All right, so following Max advice, I just copy the link and I paste it like that. So, right, and now we, we remove it, yeah? That looks much better, guys. That looks much better. So, now on the home page, we have the eventually, ah, here you go. So, eventually, the home page, we got the go to skills page. And then, when I am on the skill page, let's ignore the UI and everything. Yeah, let's just focus on the functional aspects of uh, this presentation. So, when uh, you are in the skills page, then you can go home. So that's that's great, guys. We don't need to manually type anything at all. And if you pay attention to the URL address, you see it keeps changing. 
and that's great because I can I can bookmark any of my portfolio pages so I can send it to a friend to a relative and then they can check whatever the content I'm trying to show on that URL any questions Yeah. Ah, uh, I see what do you mean. Uh, yeah, I don't want to explain that right now. So the thing is, on task number thirty something, thirty something. Uh, so we talk about uh, Google Analytics. You know, guys, Google Analytics. So you know. Uh, if you want to track your customers, so for instance, we want to see how popular each URL is, how many customers are landing on the homepage, how many customers go to slash skills, you know, this sort of analytics, this sort of things. So at that stage, we will like to listen to capture URL changes. And at that stage, we will need to introduce some changes in this process. But that's way beyond the scope of this session because this is just an intro to, uh, to routing. So you don't need to change index.js at all. For now, the only thing you need to change is the main app.js, as you can see here. Anything else, guys? No? All right, so we got a few minutes left. So uh, we are going to refactor the code because you, are, you have been asking that from the first minute of the session, right? So let's do that together. Let's do that together. Actually, I'll do something. I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm tired today already. So you tell me. If you want to scale your portfolio, tell me. What's, what would you do? A new file where source, all right, new file. Routing. Uh, uh, let me disagree on that already, uh, Maxim. Look, we got two components, right? Home page and skills page. Why don't we move these components to individual Files or for pages, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so what do you do? Two files, yeah. Dot what? Dot jpg. Uh, dot js. Cool. All right. Right, and then the other file is skillspage.js. What happened if we go? Yeah, yeah, go for it, Aaron. Uh -huh. Why? Why you want to with a folder, Aaron? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. So let's. Yeah, for modularity. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So then let's move the home page to the pages folder. Uh, do you want to move it? Yes, thank you for nothing. And then we'll move the skills page to the page folder. Um, and what if we got some CSS? Where will you draw the CSS stuff? No, specific for each page. here why guys don't we create a new folder for each page because because you're gonna have multiple files on each folder you're gonna have the javascript you're gonna have the css you have a sexy picture of yourself in the beach. I mean, you're going to have multiple files, guys. So be ready for the future. Exactly. Exactly. 
cool nice 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 all right so we'll talk about css later on so first of all let's refactor what we have and once everything works as expected we'll talk about the styling very quickly yeah all right so then what well i mean what, what else guys you tell me what else should i do import react all right and what else Export default, Whoa. the function. So we, we, what do we do? We do we cut it or do we copy it? We cut it out. Yeah, correct. Get that, and then we paste it on my homepage. Yeah, cool, nice. Yeah. So what else? Okay. So, fair enough. Import what? Oops. So, now you got the folder structure. From where? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Anyone, fantastic. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Maxim. Anyone apart from Aaron or Maxim can tell me what's next? Yeah. Import the link. Oh. That's very interesting. Look at what Elena said, guys. Elena is suggesting that we have to import the link. Do you agree on that? Yes, absolutely, because we are using them. Exactly, guys. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So we need to import not everything, but at least at least the link. So import link from React Router DOM. Will that work? What? Exactly, exactly. We need to put in curly braces because remember that on React Router DOM everything is exported as non default, so we need to surround it by curly braces. What else? Correct, so now we need to repeat the process for the skills page, right? Export default and then skills page. And then we have to remember to import the React and the link. Do we okay? I'm from the from the app.js point of view, we obviously have to import it, right? The new component skills and then skills page. Hmm. Anything else? A skill space, right? Another skills. Do we get any elegance warning on app.js? Is there anything not quite correct? Exactly. Not sure if you can see that, guys, but the link is grayed out because we don't, we're not using it anymore. So we don't need it here at all. Don't import things that you are not going to use, right? That's a bit silly. Cool, that looks super good to me. That looks super professional. So let's pay attention to the result and see if it works. Skills page, boom, it works. Home page, boom, it works. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So the very last part of this session is uh, I want to add, for instance, a blue background on the home page and a green background on the link on the skills page. Can anyone tell me how to do that? Correct, correct. What's the name of the CSS associated to the homepage? Fantastic, Lauren. Homepage.css. And then what? All right. So no, 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 no. Ooh, no, 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 no. We are not going to use a new universal. Yes, just a background. B blue background on the homepage, guys. How do we do that? 
Adiv, all right. Okay. Okay. What do you think, guys, about the CSS? Yeah. So, what do you think about this this way of styling your uh, homepage? Yeah. So that's dangerous, uh, Maxim. That's very dangerous because you are changing the background color of every single div of your application. You may have hundreds, but that's not that's not what they want. <laughs> No, 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 I'm not, no, 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 wait, 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 Maxim, I'm not talking about the long term, no, no, I'm talking about now, now that won't work, and let me show you why, all right, so imagine that we do that, fantastic, 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 let's, let's take that as a valid answer, so now, back to the skills page, skills page dot CSS, so now, uh, on the CSS of the skills page, we want to change the background color to uh, blue, for instance, to green, sorry, so we do background color green, Exactly, exactly. We are. Uh, that's it. You got it. You see, we are breaking the encapsulation principles. We learned that on the last week. You should never do this in a, in a web application, right? So these styles of the home page should remain on the home page. How can we name a space? How can we control the boundaries of our CSS scope? Exactly on the root element class name was all right. So give give me guys a good class name for the homepage. Homepage exactly yeah, easy easy easy. You see predictability. That's what we are achieving here. And now how do I refer to the class name like that? Dot homepage correct, Lauren. Yeah, see dot homepage background color blue. Exactly, Maxim. Okay, we can do the same. Yeah, you're right. We can do the same for the skills page. Skills page. So now on the CSS skill page. Skills page. Background color green. Whatever. Will this work? Why not? Ooh, Elena is agrees with you, Maxim. Why not, Elena? Uh, ah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. We need to import it, yeah? So, import. So, from the home page, uh, can I do something like that? That's bullshit, guys. That's a spaghetti code, you see? From the home page, I'm importing the CSS associated to the skills field. Like, what the hell? What the bloody hell is going on here? Don't do that. Don't do that. So, the exactly so the javascript file will import the corresponding css file for both the home page and the uh, skills page so let's see if it works this time well the, obviously the look and feel is a bit horrible but but hey guys once again it works right it works you see we are changing the color of the dynamic part of the application so now the uh, home page, no, sorry, that's the skills page. The skills page is green and the home page is blue. So that is working like a charm perfectly. Cool. Questions? Yeah, go for it, Elena. Yes. Yeah. 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 
All right, let's see. Okay, okay, okay. So you you want to do that, right? Okay, okay. That's very romantic, Elena, but that won't work because by definition, CSS styles are global. So it doesn't matter whether that CSS file got loaded from one JavaScript file or from a different JavaScript file. So this will affect every single div in your application. So if you do that, you are breaking it because the color will remain either blue or green, depending on which one goes first or what goes last, to be more precise. It will remain the same color forever. So look, the home page is green. The skill page is green because the styles are global. That's why it is so important not to play with such generic selectors. It's important to keep everything private. What else, guys? Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. That's correct. That, that, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's correct. Mm hmm. Cool. Awesome. Good timing. Yeah, go for it, Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. No, 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 no. No, that's a good point. What happened if you got, uh, let me actually, let me show you something a bit off topic. What happened if you got uh, three, three million lines of code? Uh, you know, the ha have you watched Jurassic Park, guys, from 1983? So the software looking after the security of the original Jurassic Park movie has two million lines of code, right? According to uh, the, the young lady with a weird ability of controlling a system she's never touched before. But anyway, so once you get, once you got a complex piece of software, uh, you know, you, you, that's a good point. So how do you deal with that? So eventually we'll be able to deal with uh, nested roots. I'm not going to explain that in detail right now, but just to give you some sort of overview. So for instance, look, that's the platform. That's the main routing file of Codri. And as you can see, if I scroll down, I got, you see, you see guys, look at how many roots I have, many. However, 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 the thing is, even though I got many roots, if I go to news, for instance, you see, you can check the news on Codri. If I check the news component, uh, let me open it, news.jsx, the news component has more roots, relative roots to the news component. Yeah. That's the way you can uh, create a hierarchy of roots. So, sorry guys, there's a lot of background noise coming from someone. Thank you. So, from your main app.js, how you call it, you will render one root, like a slash news. But then, when talking about news, you can uh, display a list of news. You can add news. You can edit news. You can, you can run multiple subroutes, right? So from a URL point of view, that will look something like that. So you got localhost 3000 slash news, but then at the same time, you got localhost 3000 news slash, I don't know, view slash edit slash add. You see? So you will have multiple routes in the context of news. That's why we will eventually build a hierarchical, a nested structure of roots. Once again, that goes beyond the scope of this session. However, on the on the article, if you are curious, because I think that that's, that's a good exercise, on the article I send you at the beginning of the session, you'll find out uh, all these things. You'll find out how to deal with uh, nested roots. Also, you will find out how to deal with uh, dynamic roots. That's 
task number 11, 12, 13, some of that, right? 14, I don't remember. But you'll learn how to create some sort of placeholders or some sort of wild cards to be able to have multiple routes controlled by the same pattern. Okay? But once again, that's a different story. That's part of conflicts. So I will leave you playing with that a bit. Anything? Thank you very much, Aaron. Anything else? No? Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. If you need any help, you know where I am. So see you soon, guys. Thank you. Take care. Take care.